Hi, my name is Stephanie and you are here with Move Within Yoga. This is our pilot video filmed here in central New Jersey on Friday, September 13th, 2019. Move Within Yoga is a contemplative yoga that deals with free breath. It's a focus on free breath and we'll explore all of this and more in the weeks to come. So if you're looking for a more a slower, more meditative style of movement, this is your place. If you have any injuries or concerns, talk to your doctor and use common sense when you're watching this or any other video. We'll do some modifications as we go through as well, which may give you some ideas too of how to modify some of these poses. If you find any of this of interest or of value, I have a donation link in the description box below. Your donation is so appreciated. And that's again, if you find any value of this with this, I'll also have a link to my website as well. So you can read a little bit more about what this kind of yoga is about. So we'll start grabbing that or a blanket and come on your back, feet hip width apart, palms open. And you can close your eyes, keep them open, whatever is comfortable for you. But you want to turn your attention inward. and observe the breath. I don't want to interfere with my breath or try to change it or judge it or mess around with it, I'm just observing it. The rhythm of it. The depth. And just notice where the body, where the skin meets the ground. Those points where the skin, the body meets the ground. The heels, the calves. Backs of the thighs, the hips, the pelvis. Backs of the ribs, the shoulder blades, the shoulders, the arms and the elbows, the knuckles and the hand. back of my skull, back of the skull, the front of that skull, my face, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, let it just sink in ground into the back of the skull. Let it recede back. Open your eyes. Wiggle the arms and the legs. Just shake them out a little. And rotate the wrists and the ankles. 
I'm going to take the other way. And stretch the fingers out as you go through. So with a lot of computer work and sitting, just fan them out as you go through and wiggle them out. <clears throat> and come up to sitting. And again, you can modify the sitting position too if that's too much. With I know people have hip replacement or whatever. You can bring the legs out, stretch them out, fold them in, reverse the fold. <clears throat> Palms open. And again, you can close your eyes or keep them open, but just keep it the gaze loose if you do have them open. Otherwise, close the eyes. attention to the spine, spinal column. And start down below, so right in between the sit bones, above there, roughly. And it's hard to tap into because down here it's sort of being in the basement. It's like, what? But I like to think of it so the sit bones really into the ground and then you've got the tailbone, the root, and sift through, so travel up the spine. Long, light spine, lengthen through it, into the neck. and out through the crown of the head. And open the eyes. And I want you to bring your sit bones together. So you're not really gonna bring them together, but it's the muscles around them. I want you to bring, imagining you're bringing them together. So automatically it switches on the midsection here. It activates that. And bring it in a little bit more. And the key is to keep all of this here soft, breathing naturally, a free breath to it so we're not the rhythm doesn't change, we're not holding it, we're not scrunching it. And relax everything out. And just engage a fraction of that with the sit bones and the belly. So just engage just a small amount there. Bring the palms to the heart center. Arms out to the side. Float the arms out to the side, light fingers. Arms are an extension almost of the collarbone, so really lengthening out. And you can bring them up, twist to the right, and then open them out. Look over the right shoulder. And release the arms, coming back to the center. Lengthen through the spine. And twisting to the left, opening out. Look over the left shoulder. Lengthen through the spine in this twist. Lengthen through the heart center. And reach up and in the front. Sit bones on the ground. Lengthen through the spine again. Right into the arms, to the fingertips. And head and neck slightly. Going back just ever so slightly. You don't want to topple or lose your balance and come center and palms down. Mm. 
Bring your palms down. And coming up on all fours into a tabletop position. Spread the fingers out. Knees under the hips. And rounding up into cat. And as you come down, lengthen out the spine. So the tailbones, tailbone goes back. My chest comes right over the hands and I'm looking up. So forehead parallel with the wall in front and rounding up. And lengthening out. And rounding up. Stay in this pose. See what you can soften whilst maintaining the pose. What are you holding on to or overdoing you don't need to do to still maintain the integrity of the pose or the shape of it? See what you can soften without losing shape. Let the head and neck sink down a little bit more. And observe the breath here. So just observing the breath in this body at this time in this shape. And if you feel a calmness come over you or the body relax or soften, see if you can arch into it a little bit more and lengthen out. We don't want to do anything out of raw force or striving too hard or pushing or we want to create the space and opening the softness in the body so it can move into the pose a little bit more. Okay, so tuck your toes under, move the hands up a little bit. We're going to come up into downward triangle or otherwise known as downward dog. So coming up and down with triangle, take a step in with the right foot and left. Soften the thighs out a little. The heels should be off the mat. We don't want to overstrain any ligaments. It's not necessary to have the heels down. You can find stability in the legs and the hips without pushing the heels down. The most important thing is to find that stability in the feet, the legs, the hips. The head and neck is light. And the middle, right near this apex of the triangle, that is active. We want to keep that active. So if you need to engage with those sit bones to, to tap into that activation, do so. Otherwise, sometimes just bringing the attention to that part is enough to activate it or give it lift or give it a life just by, by observing it in our mind's eye and not even looking at it with my eyes. Just bringing my mental attention to it and it lifts up. Head and neck light. And then slowly bend your knees down. Crackle. Open the knees out a little. And coming up, an upright kneeling position. So arms come out to the side. Palms together. And lengthening again through the spine here. As we kneel up, it's the same thing we did sitting down. Just lengthening through the spine. Creating space in between the vertebrae. Lengthening out. And then gently, gently, if you're up for this, head and neck dip slightly back. And I'm just getting this roundedness in the upper chest. So I'm not bending through the waist or anything like that at this point. Just gentle, gentle through the heart section. Eyes up into my eyebrows, so wide open eyes. Looking out. And then bringing my hands down again, adjusting the knees, come up and downward triangle. Head and neck soft. And notice where the eyes land here in this field of vision. And the feet.
feelings that might create. So it's a different feeling here as opposed to when the eyes are looking back behind us. Soften the neck and shoulders, lifting up through the middle. Drop the knees down. Let's go back into our upright kneeling pose and just explore the feeling here of the eyes open, a wider field of vision, the heart opening up here. And even if you're not going all the way back, keep the eyes open. You can still get a different feeling or certainly a feeling of the pose maybe how that compares with downward triangle and coming center drop the right hand down you can soften the toes down if you like and keep them up and we're going to do big arm circles here this is a nice preparation pose for camel this really opens the the upper chest here so looking back, we're going to make big arm circles, and I'm keeping a look, eye contact with my palm, lifting up through the heart, and rounding back. Until it gets to the left thigh, and I face front. Right arm up. Look at the palm. And again, just watch too if the whole body's leaning back, or you're bending from the waist, or you're not bending enough from the upper chest. So again, we want to open this, this thoracic spine, opening out. And keep going until the right hand gets to the right thigh. And then we can do that again. You can do this many times if you want. We could do this several more times. Why don't we just get into camel though? So left arm up. And camel pose, left hand comes to left heel. Turn front. Right arm up. Lengthen through that right arm. And you're going to make your circle the best you can. It's going to feel a little... Maybe not fully complete or funny on that second side. Heels, hands on heels. You're going to have to lean back a little bit. I'm exaggerating here. But ultimately, you want to get the hips over the knees. Head and neck hang back. And again, you can modify this while keeping that um, work to it. By just bringing the palms to the backs of the thighs, lengthening up and coming into it like this. We want to open up the upper chest, and that can be done whether the hands are on the heels or the backs of the thighs, eyes open. There's a certain daringness here. So people can physically sometimes do this pose, but there's a feeling that overcomes like, oh out here hanging out. See if you can just observe that feeling that comes over. And then coming up slowly, bring one arm around and come into child's pose. Forehead on the ground. And if your forehead doesn't make the ground, you can make a little pillow with your wrists and hands. Oh, just recover. Point the toes to the ground. So, toes pointed. Lengthen up the spine. And just round yourself in a ball. So round yourself in a ball. Forehead and sacral, the bony back plate, 
There's some connection between these two here. Just observe the forehead and the sacral. Sacrum. And then lengthening up out of that. Grab the sides of your feet. And if that's too much, again, modify it. You can put your hands on the side of your, your calves if you want. But the hands by the side of the feet. Shifting your weight on your tush. And we're going to slowly open the legs out. Okay. And now there's a temptation here to, you know, if we're just truly just out of physical, you know, willpower, like little kids, boom, you know, the leg goes right up. Okay, we want to guide the body up a little bit. Lengthening up. So it's not just the body doing it, it's there's a communication with the mind intelligence and the body intelligence here. Lifting up. You know, if we were only five years old forever, you know, with that kind of body and that kind of bringing into action, we're not. So, and you could force yourself to do that in that way, forcing and straining, but let's see if we can, and you might not get that high in it and you might not be able to hold it. That's, that's the problem. So if you're guiding the legs up, I'm waiting for the opening. I'm waiting for the legs to kind of get this twitchy kind of, ugh, I'm ready to open up now. And then I guide them up. The legs are kind of informing me. Yeah, I'm ready now. Keep the breath flowing in the freest way possible so the legs start to shake. My heart starts to race a little bit. The breath will obviously reflect that until I, I observe it and bring it into some quiescence. So the legs tremble a little. Okay, so what? Let them shake. And the breath is getting a little shaky booty. So observe that. And let it calm down. Lengthen out the leg. And then bring it down. Stepping up. Feet more than hip width apart. We'll go into St. Andrew's Cross. Turn the palms back, tuck the ribs under, and I say that because it's my tendency to let these ribs kind of splay out, so just bringing the, the, the spine, lengthening it up, bringing the, the ribs in, and coming up on your toes, arms out. up and just twist gently side to side. Coming center, arms in 90 degree angle. From the middle, arms radiating out and coming over to the side. This hand on the leg is really light. So I'm not pressing on the leg and I'm allowing the openness, the body as it opens out with the free breath here to 
to carry it down, coming up, palms together, coming to the other side. From the middle, lifting up and out. And up. Palms together. And the other side. And coming up. Palms together. Bring your feet together. Come down and recover. So these recoveries are important. So just reassessing here the breath, what's been happening to the body here. Does the body feel warmer? Is the breath quickening? How do you feel? You might be too, just you might feel a little lightheaded or a little unbalanced. So it's just to recover, get our bearings, bring the breath in a freer, calmer state. Hmm. Bring your palms to your heart center. Arms up and forward fold. And again, this is one of those poses, very easy to modify. Bend your knees if that's just too much strain. And even if you do have, if this is easy for you, bend your knees. You can do that as well and lengthen through. If you're super flexible, really keep the feet on the ground and lengthen through the backs of the legs and bring your hips over the body a little bit more so you have that strength. So just modify it. Head and neck hang down. Bring attention to the abdominals. So let them really push out against the upper thigh. The more you release in the lower abs, the more you'll hang down. So you don't get your palms closer to the ground by pushing and again pulling yourself down. It's this deeper connection with the abdominals and this the sacrum here. And again, just observe this area. Just observe, bring your attention to this area, to this second chakra, if you like. And bend your knees, everybody bend your knees. Palms together and lengthen out, lengthen out. Palms down. And again, just recover. Let me turn to the side here. We do standing head to knee. So palms together. And we'll come into it just in a forward fold. So head and neck soften. And again, I'm directing my attention to the lower abs to come down a little bit more. It's the lower abs. I want to soften that out. And do the best you can do. If you can only come down this far bent knees, so be it. You can still work on, on softening the abs. You can still do the work. Now from here, light fingers. I'm gonna let the fingers do the walking. So for some of you, this is way, way beyond your time. But we used to have those things called phone books, and landline phones. And to find numbers, you had to get the yellow pages and you'd thumb through. So there was a commercial, let the fingers do the walking. So let your fingers do the walking. Light fingers, light, 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 tapping out. 
tapping out, lengthening out. Lengthen out. And again, if you can only come out this high, you're not on the ground, so be it. Again, you can still do this work of softening this out, releasing tension as much as you can. And again, sometimes it's easier to get in poses, sometimes it's not so easy to get in poses. Every day is a different day. Every day the body is different. And these are new poses, so just have fun and explore it. So if you're up like this, you're still reaching out. Head and neck soften, lengthening out. And then walk your fingers back. Bend your knees, palms together, coming up and down. And recover, right hand and left palm. And we'll do our next pose, scales. So right foot in front, left 45 degree angle. Just my shorts and shirt here. Palms together. And shift your weight. The toe points in the back. Try to keep the leg really light. Okay, so it's not really rigid and over tight here. Just light leg. Arms come up. Lengthening up. Eyes looking ahead. And coming into the position. So. The top half of the body comes down in equal measure. The back leg, ideally, will be coming up. And again, this is something to play at in your mind's eye. So I don't have mirrors here. You might not have a mirror. In your mind's eye, you're lengthening out and building, giving shape to the pose. Looking at ahead. side. And shift your weight. Point the toe. Lifting up. Oh, it feels really nice to stretch like that. Lengthen up. Belly nice and open. Eyes ahead of you. Now, if this is as far as you can manage, again, you can still do a lot of work and concentration. Lengthening the arm and like away from each other, meeting in this middle here, lengthening out. You can still do the work. Now if you want to keep going into it, if you feel stable, then play around with it, go into it a little bit more. But still lengthening out. Maybe that's enough for you. But we'll keep going down. Arms up, slight tip back with the neck, not much coming over. Bring your palms down and recover. Right hand and left palm. And go down the mat. On your tummy. Arms out in front of you, feet together on the ground, lengthen out. Bring the left arm to the side of the body. And from this midsection that we just worked, we've just been concentrating on, from that midsection, lift the right leg left leg rather, and right arm. And lifting up. And coming down. As you come down, swap arms. And again, I'm bringing attention to that midsection first. I'm not just lifting the arm and the leg. I'm, I'm 
Getting back here to that middle. And lifting up out of that area. And I observe the breath here. Again, just trying to bring it, bring it a little bit calmer here. And then I go back to this middle and it's softened up a little bit more. It's capable of opening a little bit more and coming down. And again, on each side, coming up, and up, and down, other side, from the middle, up, and down. Make a pillow with your hand, rest your forehead down, big toes together, heels apart. Just softening the hips and legs. So bring your legs together, arms in front of you, this time palms together, forehead down. And instead of lifting from that middle of the back, remember the belly button is that area, go up to that heart center again. And it's from here, we want to lengthen out and lift up. And then coming down. Turn over on your back. Bend your knees and just relax the hips. Let them just tilt down and up. I'm not gripping the rear end. I'm not gripping anything. I'm just tilting up and down. Just soften it out. And we will go into shoulder stand, which is the classical yoga position. And a lot of people go, oh, this is so dangerous and so scary. If it really freaks you out, just bring your legs up at a 90 degree angle. The thing that makes it scary and dangerous is when we force it, we're forcing the body to get really straight right away. So if you want, just bring your legs up. If you want to try to get into it, knees up and just rock the hips up like a ball. And then on the third one, support your hands on your rear end, your hips even. And you can see I'm really rounded over. The belly, deep belly breaths here. So the legs, ideally, we, we would like them vertical in this pose. There's no question about it. But we do not want to force, strain, make it happen. We have to guide the body in a different way. So bring attention to the heart center. And you'll find there's a bit of an opening that comes up. The hands drop further down the back. In this situation, since it's all reversed, down the back means closer to the floor or to the shoulder blades. Now I'm still a little rounded here. Breath is free. Lengthen out through the neck. Elbows maybe lengthen out. So I'm not doing anything the body does not want done. The body gets a little fidgety. It might start feeling heavy. That's a cue to start propping it up a little bit. Okay? But again, if you're in this rounded pose, so be it. Be in the rounded pose. Bring attention to the heart center. Wait for that opening to come up gradually. 
Okay, I don't want to belabor this pose, but there's so much demonization of it. It's, it's not warranted. Coming down slowly, soles of the feet down on the ground. Palms down. Engage with the sit bones. We'll go into bridge next. So engage with the sit bones slightly, that root center, lower abs, soft, belly open, heart center open. Lengthen out through the collarbones, throat open, crown of the head. And now you're going to want to lift the whole spine off the ground as much as you can, obviously. The whole spine can't come off because we've got our neck. But it's not just lifting of the hips, it's this, this whole levitation, if you like, of this up, if you like, of the spine. So the coming up, bring your heels under the bum a little bit. And again, this is something you can modify. If this is quite enough, that's quite enough. Lengthen out through the waist. So you don't want to get crunchy in the lumbar spine. Lengthen out. Chest is open. And then lower down from the neck area. Lower down. Lengthen out through the waist. Lengthen out the legs. Coming on the elbows. I'm going to spin around this side. So standing, uh, sitting head to knee. So we, we did standing head to knee. So we're going to do sitting head to knee. I'll come at a little angle here so you can see. So sitting on the sit bones, arms out. Palms facing back, collarbones lengthening out, pressing back to just prepare. So open chest, palm center, arms up, lengthen up, rib cage lengthens up, and coming over the legs. My eyes are in front, so I'm not dipping down. There is this tendency, oh, we gotta get down and rush. No, 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 no. Lengthening up, coming over. Lifting up again, out of the rib cage, lengthening out. You can open the hands out here, just create a little bit of space. Now at this point, you might notice the body trembling or tension. So observe that tension, don't get caught up with it. Lengthening up, lengthening out, coming down. Place your hands wherever they can go. So if that's only on the calves, so be it. The ankles, if they hit the feet, bring the hands to the side of the feet. And we're still lifting up in the middle. And my legs are trembling. I feel a tension here. out. Now if you can get your head beyond your knees you can start to lower the head down. If your knees, I mean if your forehead's over your knees, still keep raising out of it. So sitting head to knee, the Sanskrit is like long back. It's like, so if your back is really fairly long into it and you look down and it's more toward the shins, it's past your knees, you can let the head drop. But I'm still lifting up in the middle. Okay, I'm not sinking into it. together, coming up, round your arms back, like big, big wings, coming back, fingers pointing away, 
point your feet and just flex them. Just point and flex. Just shake them out a little. We'll go into incline plane. So engage with the upper chest. Point the toes slightly and you're going to lift again the spine up. Lifting up through the upper chest. Head and neck hang back. And come down. We're going to do that again. Coming up. Make the decision you're going to stay in it and lift up through the upper chest. And then make that decision you're going to come down. So it's really active. It is a willful decision. It's a willful pose. So bring in, even engage those sit bones. And if you have trouble with this, just make the decision. You're going to come up and you're going to make the decision now. I'm going to stay up. I'm going to come up a little more. And a little more. And coming down. And coming back on our mat. We'll go back into final, our final relaxation here. Toes pointed out, palms up. And slowly turn to the left. And slowly come up. And so that concludes our maiden video, Move Within Yoga. Again, if you found any of this of any value, please consider a donation. Details are in the description box below. If you'd like to incorporate these moves every day, maybe just a few every day, consistency is the way to go. So I encourage you to do that. Thank you so much for, for, for coming along and joining me. Thank you.